Like you can't spend your way out of poverty. You can't smoke yourself clear of throat cancer. You can't drink your way sober. And we can't drive our way out of climate catastrophe. Simply switching to electric cars is not going to be enough to avert the climate crisis. So today I'm going to be talking about electric cars and as amazing as they may be relative to petrol, gas, diesel or even hybrid cars, they are not the silver bullet we'd like to think they are. Nothing ever is. And if you've ever wondered how many cheeseburgers, glasses of milk, bowls of porridge and bananas each and every single one of the people, the 7.75 billion people on this planet could consume each year for the same carbon footprint of our driving habit, even in electric cars, then listen on. <laughs> this one is for you. So I'm going to be covering all that along with some good advice, along with some real empirical numbers on what you should be doing and why you should be doing it instead of driving. And then we're going to finish up with the why aren't people angry about this post bag. And this week's offering comes from uh, Therese, who has some thoughts on the Insulate Britain movement and, uh, and racism. So do stick around for that. But anyway, let's get on with it. So just switching to electric cars on their own will not save the planet. Car ownership has increased in the UK from around 5 million cars in 1960 to 31 million cars today. And these increases are very similar across the developed world and actually far worse in the developing world. In the USA, I don't mean the USA is a developing world, uh, but anyway, in the USA it was 61 million cars in 1960 and 290 million cars today. Worldwide, there are around 1.4 billion cars on the road today. So even if we all swapped our gas guzzlers for electric cars, with a reduction in CO2 level, this does not come close to wiping out the massive increase in car ownership. The only real answer is for us all to be driving less. When in fact, what this is more likely to do, using the psychology of the rebound effect, is, is to have us drive more. An example of the rebound effect. Direct rebound effects occur when energy efficiency gains result in higher demand in the same area. For example, after insulating your house, which is funny because that's the subject of this week's post bag. But anyway, you adjust the heating so that the average temperature in the house is higher than before the renovation. That's the rebound effect. So how that works with cars is if you buy an electric car, there is a high probability that you'll look at it and go, I can now drive with impunity and it's cheaper as well per mile. So you may actually end up driving more. But anyway, for the purpose of these fascinating calculations, we are going to use the UK average mileage of 7,400 miles per year and the USA average mileage of 13,500 miles per year and assume that we have all swapped our average family cars for electric cars. So let's start with cheeseburgers. So if we all drive our new electric car an average of 7,400 miles per year, like we do in the UK, that is the same carbon footprint as feeding 75 fully cooked, fully loaded cheeseburgers to every single person on the planet every year. Now, if we use the USA average mileage, that's 137 cheeseburgers per person on the planet per year, 7.75 billion people. Obviously, this is a massive improvement on the 456 cheeseburgers for every single person on the planet than it would have been with your average family petrol car, but not really still good enough. So let's do another one. Let's do the cow's milk. That would be the same carbon footprint as every single person on the planet having 133 pints of cow's milk per year. Or 243 pints of cow's milk per year uh, if we take the American one. Or in your average petrol driven family car that would be 810 pints of cow's milk per year. Now just to be clear that is per year for every single person alive on the planet today all 7.75 billion of us. And you have probably spotted a theme going on here. And yes, you are correct, it is cows. And cows are very, very, very bad for the environment. If we are going to survive this, 
it's not just driving less that we need to do. It is also not eating as many cows or indeed animals at all and not drinking as much of their milk which nature intended to go to their baby cows. I put together a video on this a few months back which you can see here uh, and I'll put, also put it in the description below. Okay, so let's move on. Let's do another couple of comparisons that don't involve cows. Let's start with a bowl of porridge using soy milk, transported and heated up and on the plate ready for you to eat. For the electric car with the average UK mileage, that would be the same carbon footprint as giving every single living human being on the planet 533 bowls of porridge per year. Or with the average USA mileage, that would be 973 bowls of porridge. That's almost three bowls of porridge per person per day. So if man could live on porridge alone, by you and everyone else giving up your new electric car, we could solve world hunger. <laughs> but let's do one more using bananas, which is a good time to declare this, uh, which is where I've been pulling the raw data for, for all these numbers. I swear that everyone on the planet should have a copy of, of this, and I'll put a link in the description below. Anyway, bananas enjoyed at home having been shipped and purchased by you an electric car doing the average uk mileage would be 2182 bananas for every single person on the planet per year an electric vehicle doing the average usa mileage would be 3981 bananas per person per year or the USA mileage with everyone still driving a family-sized petrol car, that would be 13,270 bananas per person per year. There you go, porridge and bananas, a varied diet. We have just solved world hunger, but it is fucking mind-blowing, isn't it? So you can see, buying an electric car and driving just the same as you did before is not going to solve the problem. It's really not. So let's look at the options. Traveling by train. Traveling by train is about 50% of the carbon footprint of driving an electric car, unless the train is electric and powered by renewables and or nuclear power, then it's just about 12%. Travelling by bus is about 25% of the carbon footprint of driving an electric car. But again, if this is an electric bus powered by renewables and or nuclear power, it's about 3%, 3% of the, the, the carbon footprint per mile uh, of driving your new electric car. But by far the best way to travel is walking or cycling, where the carbon footprint is so low, you need to start factoring in stuff like how many bananas you would need to eat for the extra energy. I know we are still in a pandemic, coming out of a pandemic, or even going into a pandemic, depending on your point of view. And lots of people are saying stuff like, you wouldn't catch me on a half empty bus or train for, t for a 20 minute journey, stuck with strangers. I think it's a lot safer to drive my SUV to the packed cinema to watch No Time To Die for three hours with complete strangers. You can't have it always and you won't be able to have it at all unless we get runaway climate change under control. And we won't do that by simply swapping out our fossil fuel cars for electric cars and doing guilt-free motoring and possibly even rebound motoring. There is no such thing as guilt-free motoring. Walk, cycle, bus or train or even an electric bike. That's W-C-B-O-T-O-E-A-E-B -E -E for short. <laughs> Coming up next is the Why Aren't People Angry About This post bag, where Doris, I'm fuming, this is going to read out this week's message from Therese, who has some insight into the Insulate Britain movement, so do stick around for that. But in the meantime, if you care about the future of this planet and would like to help me spread the word with my very own brand of irreverent joy, passion and anger, please do share this video. Subscribe to my channel. It is entirely free to do so. Hit the little notification button and then you'll get notified every time I put a video out, which you may or may not find irritating. Let me have your comments, your suggestions or feedback. Are you driving less? Are you planning to drive less? I'll be putting out a video soon on cycling and why a lot of motorists hate them. So it would be great to get your thoughts on that. And please do not forget to
with the right bang is very satisfying. Doing all or any of these things really does help me reach more and more people and hopefully affect positive change. And now it's time for Angry People's Post Bag with Doris. Oh, it's the cars. Welcome back to the Angry People's Post Bag. This week's post bag comes from Therese. Who, who, like a lot of people, is struggling with the concept that the climate crisis will bring extreme weather, which could be hot or cold. So, Doris, over to you. Roy, whoever's taken the extra large bin off of Ramsey Street better put it back. I know, I, know what, I know it's there somewhere, I'm going to come and have a look for it, and I know it's different because that's got a lock on it. I'm fooming. <laughs> Why does this stuff always happen to you, Doris? No, no, don't, don't answer. Don't answer that. Perhaps you could just read out this week's post bag. I'm fuming. I'll be fuming. I'll be fuming if you don't read out this week's post bag. OK. Right, that's it. I'm going out to buy a jumper. These lot. <laughs> they don't see the harshness of reality. <laughs> Why don't they do something useful about racism or global warming or whatever? If they're killed at home... Why don't you put a jumper? <laughs> thank you, Doris. Thank you, Therese. And thank you for watching. If you would like to see the actual video on Insulate Britain, you can see it by clicking here. This one's probably a quite good one to start with. If you drive your kids two miles to school every morning in your fucking SUV, it's not just you who is the twat. You are teaching your children to be twats as well. I'm going to take that out. <laughs> we'll put it on the end. I'll probably take that out. <laughs>